Hi everybody, this is Jody Becker and I would like to welcome you to our first lesson in a series of three. In this lesson plan we will be going over three different modules in Apache OpenOffice 4. This first one will be on text documents, the second one will be on spreadsheets, and the third ones will be on presentations. Apache OpenOffice is a free open source software available for download at openoffice.org. In this first lesson, I'm going to show you how to download and install Apache OpenOffice on your computer. We will use text documents or writer to open a Microsoft Office Word document and edit that document in Apache OpenOffice 4. We will also learn how to insert images, tables, format the font, the text size, the text color, the alignment, and then save that document as an uh, Apache Open Office document, a Microsoft Office Word document, or export that as a PDF. Now that I've laid out the itinerary for this lesson, I'm going to minimize Apache Open Office and we will get started with the download. I am at www.openoffice.org. I'd like to download the new version of Apache Open Office 4.1.2. I'm going to download the full installation for Windows EXE. Apache OpenOffice is available in Linux as well as the OXS. Download full installation. This will redirect me to SourceForge.net. And our download is starting. Now that I've downloaded the program, I'm going to click on Apache Open Office and make sure this is an EXE file for Windows. And I will go ahead and run this. It will take me to the installation wizard. I'm going to go ahead and unpack this on my desktop. And off we go. Now that I have Apache OpenOffice 4 installed on my computer, I am going to click on text documents and get started with the next phase of this lesson. This is going to open up a brand new untitled document in OpenOffice Writer. If I want to open a new file, I go to File, Open. I'm going to navigate to my desktop and I will scroll down to find the file that I'd like to open. Let's go with the reading response. Now what that does is that just imports all of the text from that document. As you can see it is complete and the formatting is exactly the same as it was in the Microsoft Office Word document. So the first thing we're going to do is play around with some font styles and some font sizes. I will show you how to edit headings. First I'm going to select uh, the first heading. I can scroll up here. It's a very similar menu and tool layout to Microsoft Office. I can choose different font sizes. There's a little bit of a preview here. I can adjust the size over here. or I can go over here to our apply style and choose from a selection of different headings. If you don't see a format up here that you're interested in, you can scroll down to more and that will open up your styles and formatting box and then you can double click and your selected text will change accordingly. I like to go with heading 3 and I'll close out the styles and formatting box and while I have this text selected I'm going to change the color of it. I like purple. And I'm going to increase the size to 16. If I want to delete some text, I simply highlight it. I can right click and I can go to cut. Next we're going to go ahead and insert an image. I'm going to go up to insert on the menu bar. I'm going to scroll down to picture and choose from file. 
I have an image of Gabriella Coleman that I'd like to insert. I've saved that on my desktop. Here it is. I'll double click. And what happens, I'm going to move this down the page a little bit, is what it does is it splits the text. So I would like for the image, to, for the text to wrap around the image. And one thing you notice is up here the context specific toolbar changes according to what I have selected. If I click back up here on text, you'll notice that that changes. So I'm going to click on the picture. I can choose which text wrap I like from the toolbar menu. I prefer the text that uh, wraps, it's called page wrap. And I can move this image anywhere around on the page that I'd like to. And the text will follow it accordingly. So there's two other ways to do a text wrap on a picture. You can right click and go to wrap and then choose your option there. Or you can right click and go to picture and that opens up our picture properties box. Up here we have a series of tabs and one of those options is wrap and you can choose your text wrap from there. Feel free to explore these tabs. There's quite a few options available such as cropping the picture, creating borders around the picture. You can adjust the width and the height, or you can keep the current ratio. I'm going to go ahead and close out this properties box. And we can get started with inserting some shapes and some tables. On the lower part of our screen, we have a docked toolbar. This is our drawing toolbar. We can undock this toolbar by clicking on the handle and dragging, and then we can move this around the page. If we want to redock this toolbar, I'm going to pull it down to the, towards the bottom of the page, click on this little arrow, and click on Dock Toolbar. I'm going to click on a symbol. I'll just go with Symbol Shapes and then scroll up and insert this symbol by clicking and dragging on the document. And if you'd like the text to wrap around this image or this shape, you right click, go down to wrap, and it's the same options. I'll do a page wrap. And as you notice, the text comes right up to the edge of the shape. Rather than following the nodes around the outside, I can move this around the document and the text will flow around it accordingly. Inserting tables is just as easy as inserting shapes or inserting images. I'm going to put my cursor where I'd like to insert a table on this document. Go up to insert and scroll down to table. Here I can pick how many columns and how many rows I'd like. I'm going to leave this named as table one. I'm going to insert four columns and four rows. I will select the heading on and click on OK. Now what you can do is you can format the individual cells. You can highlight all of them. As you see, our content specific toolbar changes once again. I'm going to fill with the background color. I can also insert table, insert text into the individual cells on this table simply by typing in some text. I can adjust the color of this text within the cell. I can also adjust the font size within the cell. Now remember, our context specific toolbar up here will change according to what we have selected. Something I would like to leave you with is the ability to explore further the tools and the icons available up here. Click on help, go to what's this, a question mark will appear next to your cursor and you can simply scroll over the tool icons and you will get a detailed description of what this tool is capable of. 
Well, now that I've shown you how to download and install Apache OpenOffice, open a Microsoft Word document, adjust our font, as well as our font sizes and our font color, I've shown you how to apply different styles to the document, I've shown you how to insert images and shapes and wrap the text around those, I've also shown you how to insert and format tables. Now I would like to show you how to save this document in a Microsoft Office Word document, an Apache Open Office document, or export this as a PDF. These commands are found under the File menu in the drop-down commands. We can go to Save As, and, that, and then you can select Save As Type. Right now it's an ODF text document. We can save this as a Microsoft Office Word document or I'll click on cancel. You can click on file and scroll down to export this as a PDF. So this concludes the first section of our lesson plan. I'll look forward to seeing you in our next tutorial on Apache OpenOffice Calc or spreadsheets.